Hello and welcome to another beautiful time on Executive Discuss coming to you on the network service of the NTA. My name is Ololade Adeni Jadale. It's no news that the world has become such a small village, a global village as we always call it, because thanks to information technology, so much can happen within such a short space and in very, very little time. Well, how is Nigeria keen into the world of information technology? How prepared are we to launch ourselves into the digital economy of the world? So much to discuss today as it's time to meet my guest. Um, well, how do I begin to describe him? He's from the academia, actually. Yes, he is a professor of petroleum geosciences. He's a man who has spent so many years, you know, um, impacting knowledge in our children. Now today, he is saddled with the responsibility of taking Nigeria from where we are into the digital space and of course, um, you know, building the digital economy. He heads an organization that is, uh, well, I want to believe is mandated with providing us internet services. Well, okay, I'm not allowed to know. Yes, I do not know at this particular point in time because we definitely will be schooled by my guest on the show today. Please join me as we welcome to the program the managing director. Yes, a very busy man, I must say. The managing director and chief executive officer of Galaxy Backbone, Professor Mohammed Belu Abubakar. So, hello, sir. How are you? It's good to have you on the show with us. Thank you very much, Lola. It is my pleasure having you. And and um, uh, to the watchers, uh, I would say hello to all. Thank you. I started my early years uh, in Kombe, uh, so and ultimately started my primary school in Kombe. Uh, specifically, uh, uh, there is a, a school that has a changed name now. Uh, so uh, the school was Jankai Primary School then. Mm. Okay, and uh, that that was in 1977. Uh, and then ultimately, I finished that particular school in 1977 and, um, and uh, started my secondary school. Uh, so then, uh, the time I was just to start the secondary school, the government started to think of also coming up with the C334 system. system. And uh, they wanted to start with us. Mm. Uh, so, so that means uh, you're supposed to, 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 to have six years in the secondary school. And, uh, but uh, I don't know whether you call it we were lucky or not lucky. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened was uh, at the end of the day, uh, the government was not fully preferred and, uh, for, for that journey. So we happened to be the last batch mm. of... Uh, having five years five for secondary school. in secondary school. Yes, in secondary school. So that was it. So I had, uh, and uh, the major component or the major 
uh, schools I attended during the secondary school. That is that junior secondary school, part of junior secondary school we call it, where we uh, we did not start the school, but we were the second batch. Okay, okay for that particular school, and ultimately uh, I went to also Goma Science Secondary School, Billiri, in still Gombe State, and uh, finished in Gombe Science Secondary School, Gombe. Uh, in still the Gombe State. Uh, so, and uh, subsequently, uh, in 1988 specifically, uh, I joined the university, direct actually. Uh, it happened that um, my, my result was good, okay? So I, I just joined directly uh, the university. Uh, in the secondary school, to some extent, with all humility, uh, I, I will say that uh, I'm one of the, the flag bearers for the school for quizzes and other kind of things like that. Mm. And then uh, ultimately, when I joined the university in 1988, we had some delays because of some also strike here and there. Uh, we were to finish earlier, but uh, we finished in 19. Uh, 95 specifically, and then had a service in 1996. And, and you studied? I studied geology. Mm. Yeah, okay, and so I studied geology. And uh, I graduated actually as the best graduating student in the, the geology, applied geology specifically, applied geology, and won the Chief Sunday Awareness Prize for the best graduating student in the, in the applied geology. That was in uh, 1995. Oh. I did my service in, um, uh, in Port Harcourt. You know, mm. normally, uh, we will say that it's a very good kind of a first team for geologists. Yes, okay. of course, <laughs> so, yes. So that was it. And so I was, I was there in Port Harcourt in uh, 1996. Uh, and, um, and, uh, I served in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in the Port Harcourt refinery. Oh. Okay, so, so that was it. And uh, after finishing, I will say that I'm also one of the few ones that uh, uh, have opportunity actually to remain hmm. and get a, a job in the, in, the, in, 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 in the oil sector, as it is. Uh, but um, I have this quest for, for more Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, kind of a certificate, more knowledge and other thing. Uh, so, despite the fact that uh, I was asked to stay hmm. with even almost a promise to be hmm. given the, <laughs> a job, uh, he somehow will say I sneaked away, <laughs> okay, and then went back. And uh, so I finished the service in 1996, and in 1997, the same university that graduated me, uh, also took me as a, a graduate assistant. Fantastic. Okay, so, and I started now the journey of uh, the academics. Mm. Okay, so, and uh, finished my master's in uh, 2001. And uh, even here, although we were, we, were, we, we were few, I think about four of us that uh, went through the master's studies. Okay. But uh, we we'll say, Again, with much more humility, my result was the best. Best of all. Okay, lot. so out of that, and uh, so, and my PhD I finished in two thousand and six. Um, so the masters was in petroleum geosciences, mm -hmm. as we've said, uh, particularly sedimentology, petroleum geosciences. Mm. Uh, the same, and uh, the PhD is also on the same line. Okay. Uh, in between, I was able to go to Germany for for research work for the PhD. Okay. Mm, so uh, I did my research work in Germany, and then finally concluded uh, the, the PhD here in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Uh, so I was, uh, uh, and I have to also say with much humility again, uh, the. PhD was rated by NUC as the best PhD in wow. all physical sciences from wow. all Nigerian universities. Wow. Okay, so when we say physical sciences now, we are not talking of only the geology mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. We're talking of all those physical sciences and physics, chemistry, biology, computer science mm -hmm. that were under the uh, 
the faculty of science there. Yes. So the PhD was rated as the best, and I got an award. Okay, we call it Nutas Award okay. from the NUC. Fantastic. And uh, we had the ceremony, I think, in 2007 in Ogomosho. Mm, Ogomosho. Okay, yeah, so, yeah. So, so that was, that was, uh, that was it. And then subsequently, I continued, <laughs> okay. In the academia. Yeah, in the academia. And, um, and uh, became a professor in 2016. Okay, in, uh, in the same the sciences. Abu Bakr yeah. Tafa Abalewa University. Abu Bakr University. Mm. So, and, uh, so I think from the very academic perspective, yes. that is what uh, we've been doing. I've trained many, many PhDs, uh, many uh, master students. And I'm um, also, in fact, happy to even uh, say that one of the PhD students I trained who is presently in Meduguri is also a professor. Fantastic. <laughs> so, so that is uh, wow. this is, uh, the kind of things that's, uh, that <laughs> that's how we went through as far But as I, I must can. ask you, because um, you decided to mm. study geology in yeah. the university. Yeah. Why geology? This is also another beautiful history and story. Uh, I wanted to study medicine. Okay. That was my initial was just to study medicine. All the colleagues that we, uh, you know, I remember I said we, we've been doing quiz for the university. So all the colleagues, my colleagues uh, then, that we were doing the same thing, the quiz for the secondary schools. I think out of um, four of them, three are all consultants, medical doctors. <laughs> okay, so, so you can see. The, so I wanted to also go for medicine. Yes. And... Uh, so, and I applied to ABU, you know, then it is the, mm -hmm. so they gave me actually admission. Uh, but uh, my, 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 my father, I would say the guardian that has brought me up, he is also a civil servant and he's retired. So uh, he came to Abu Bakr Tafabala University. And then, the, then the Abu Bakr Tafabala University is not very well known because it's, it's actually an arm of uh, Ahmadu Bella University, okay. but um, an engineering arm of Ahmadu Bella University at mm, one point. Okay. So Just actually, engineering there. Yeah, engineering. So it went like that, and then another time it was a university, and again another time it... So there was something like that. So it was like a faculty of engineering of Ahmadu Bella University. So it's not very well known, uh, and it's so quiet, everybody's just, you know. So that was it. And so he came and then so I, they discussed with the people in the giving admissions. Said, ah, he has a very good result. Why always going for medicine? medicine. There is even <laughs> geology, this and that. You know, our people are not, no, they don't know about all these mm -hmm. things. There is need. So, so ultimately, they, they offered to give me an admission based on the results that I have. Uh, so they gave the, 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 the admission. For geology. For geology. And then uh, he came with it. And then he said, you see, this is what they have offered you. They told me it's a very good course. This and this. I said, uh, uncle, I don't know this course. And this is not what I want to do. And this is not what I want to do. And he said, well, anyway. I said, OK. Uh, now, I accepted I will go. But in fact, I will go to that university because it's closer to home. <laughs> But I'm not going to, not going to read geology. Uh, oh. He said, oh, no, the, the opening is there. They can change the course for you. What do you want to read? I said, I want to read computer science. Okay, not even your medicine again. Yes, yes. Mm. Not because they don't do medicine, medicine in, the, yes. in, 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 in ATBU then. It was an engineering mm -hmm. kind of thing. So it's sciences, then engineering. I said, no, I will, I will only do computer science. Huh. He said, okay, fine. I went. Uh, I, 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 I came to the university and then met the admission officer uh, just to register. Then I said, you see, I don't want to register geology. I want computer science. He said, but this course is this, 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 this. So he explained the, 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 about the course mm -hmm. to me. Still, I said, I, said, no, I don't, you want, don't to want to do it. He said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll change the course for you. But the registrar is not... 
uh, available. On sea. Mm. So uh, he has traveled. He will come back tomorrow. Wow. So you come back tomorrow, and then, and then you can have that. I said okay. So I went out. So after I went out, then I just uh, stopped on the balcony somewhere, and then I just was thinking. I said, well. You see, these people, they are elder people, you know, they have talked about it, don't know this. and Then one man just told me to Why go back. Why not give it a trial? Yeah, 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 so I just went back and I said, I think, just give me the geology, I will try, I'll try. Wow. So that was how I got into geology. Into geology. Uh, so, and I will tell you that it has been very beautiful. Yeah. And I wanted to read computer science and now I am the managing director of the computer science base <laughs> club. <laughs> Can you <laughs> beat that? <laughs> Can you beat that? <laughs> so, you that, that <laughs> so, I so, mean, it, it, it has all just worked together, exactly. you know, for you. Exactly. So now, that today you are the managing director, chief executive officer of yeah. Galaxy Backbone. Yeah. What is the mandate of Galaxy Backbone? I mean, what exactly do you guys do there? Mm. Galaxy Backbone Limited was conceived by the government of the day in 2006 specifically, that is the government of those days, Okay. in 2006. Uh, actually, it was started by a state, mm. okay, of the federal government, Jigawa state specifically. Okay. In fact, the name uh, was coined from there. Mm. It was Jigawa state government that started under the uh, Sami Nuturaki. Sami Nuturaki administration. Yeah, administration. So he was the one who started the galaxy. And then um, uh, uh, His Excellency, uh, the President, uh, our President Obasanjo, yeah, Obasanjo went. And then he saw what uh, the guy State Government is doing. And this, this is what we're supposed to be doing also at the, at the, at the national at, at level. The national level. Uh, and ultimately, there was a discussion between them, and then they agreed uh, that actually the, 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 the national government can take over now okay. uh, the outfit as it is. So as we, as it is presently, the headquarters is in of Galaxy Balbon is actually Jigao State uh, property. Mm. Mm. Okay, so so that was it. So what uh, the Galaxy is supposed to be a company. It was registered as a company. A limited of, liability yeah, company. Yeah, limited liability company of a government. Okay. Uh, and it's supposed to give uh, an IP-based network, provide an uh, uh, IT-based network uh, that is supposed to now provide connectivity to all ministries, departments, and agencies, including also the private sector, hmm. and uh, also provide what we refer to as uh, the transversal applications. When we say transversal applications, we are talking of um, those um, applications that uh, more uh, to and above MDAs need to use. Okay? okay, need to use. So, as a case, you can, or as an example, you can say, for example, IPs, okay. IPPIs, IPPIs. Every MDA is using it. Mm -hmm. You say, give me every MDA is using yes. it. So. It is actu actually supposed to be Galaxy that will be driving that transversal application. Okay. So that is one. Two, the Galaxy Backbone is also supposed to be an organization or is, it has a mandate uh, to, 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 to host all government data that is provide storage for it, host a relevant website of the government, and all other kind of uh, ICT related. Uh, uh, information of the government, okay, uh, so, and provide also security to this data. Okay. Uh, because uh, you know, in the um, in digital economy, or that is uh, in, in this present the kind of revolution. Maybe I'll come to that. Data is money. Yes. Data, data is, is everything. Key. Yes. Data in 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 the case of Nigeria is the black gold. Exactly. That is the oil you're talking yes. about. Okay, so, so, so government uh, wants this particular data to be protected. Mm. Okay, so, and it cannot hand, uh, hand over this data to the private sector. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Because yeah, the protection be now will not be by, there. Yes, yes. Um, it has to be managed by a government. Yeah, government owned, um, entity or organization. 
So, 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 so that is uh, the second component of it. Okay. The data hosting, the data within the, the data organization, and then uh, within the government organization, mm -hmm. as well as protecting the data. Okay, and that is the, the second component of it. And the third component, which is also very important, and unfortunately still we are battling to say that we have also entrenched it, is um, to provide a kind of a cost saving for the government. Okay. Uh, before the establishment of Galaxy in 2006, uh, I know you will know all this. You see almost every MDA, you will see they have their visa, they mm -hmm. have this. Mm -hmm. Every MDA is just providing all yes, this kind of things. their own service Yeah, themselves. so they will come up with their infrastructure and also be spending a year in year out on maintaining okay. this particular infrastructure. Okay. Okay. So, and uh, the, 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 so it's like... Uh, all the MDS are in silos as far as ICT is concerned. So then now the government in its own wisdom wanted to have now an organization that will harmonize all yes. this. Okay, and then the, if you, if, and the, they will build now, put money to build now, for example, data center. Okay. And in this data center, you as an MDA don't need to replicate it. It has already been it's, done. It's been done for so you. So you, you just, just key, key into it. Key into it. So it's supposed to be saving the government uh, cost. Uh, you don't need to replicate what is already there. Mm. Government has put in a lot of money to be able to provide for, for example, the data center that we have in Galaxy Bagwan is a tier three data center. And as I'm speaking now, we have not utilized more than 20% of it. Oh, of the data. Yeah, all, all the, of the available space. Okay. Where now all the MDS can key in key and in. put whatever. You, we have not utilized, mm. we have not utilized uh, more than 20% of it. It's there. Hmm. So, so we expect the organizations now to key in than to just continue to. In fact, that is the whole reason, as I said, that is the whole reason of even establishing the galaxy. The galaxy backbone. But still, we have been going front Back and, and forth. Uh, front and, you know. Uh, with the MDAs uh, to simply do that, okay, uh, the infrastructure is there. Um, so, uh, in the wisdom of government, in fact, they have even tried uh, to identify some key ICT uh, projects, and they said, these projects, we're not going to allow MDAs to, to put it in their own budget. It, it, has, to it be, has to be, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, in, but, uh, but it's just a component of it. Okay. It is supposed to be more than that, okay. as it is. And even recently, uh, the government came up with, again, another, the Federal Executive Council said, and then, and, uh, and uh, they came up with uh, the fact that all MDAs must make Galaxy a first point of call in all their ICT projects. Okay. Uh, they have to do that before. So, uh, there, 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 there is a circular to that uh, that was released by the Secretary of Government of Federation recently mm. to all the MDAs. Uh, still, we have been having that uh, yes. leg dragging and other thing, but it's saving costs and it's also providing security for the providing internet access easily, uh, protection of the data, data that is and it. saving costs. That is it. And saving Those costs. are the key mandates that is of, it. These are the um, key Galaxy, of Galaxy backbone. backbone. By mandate of Galaxy, it is supposed to operate, uh, maybe we can say like the transmission company of Nigeria, like okay. transmission company of Nigeria, or like waterboard. So the transmission company of Nigeria will, will move whatever is generated from the gain cause, isn't it? And then the, to the discourse. Mm. That is the distribution, uh, the Com dis distribution yes. company. companies. If these distribution companies have a problem, like they have aged uh, transformers, very bad kind of connectivity in terms of wiring and other things, whatever they have brought will not translate to mm -hmm. real service, mm -hmm. experience, by the customers. Yes. So it's the same thing with Galaxy Backbone. We're supposed to take connectivity to the door steps of the MDS. Okay. But the internal wearing, that is what we call the local area local network. Local area network, yes. Is, uh, local area network is 
for the MDAs to put it in place. Um, Galaxy Backbone cannot go into that. Yeah, yeah, I will not say cannot. I'm coming to it. So, so, but by Monday, that is just what we're supposed to do. Okay. Take it to the doorstep. Take it to their doorstep. Yeah, but uh, you know, I said we are also a company. So, an MDA can also ask, okay, we have this area network project. Galaxy can do it for, it, for mm. us. And they can also decide Galaxy. that we want another person to come and do it. Or okay. Another okay. They are at liberty. That will be between Galaxy and the MDA. That is it. It's Not, separate. That is it. It's separate. Mm. So, 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 so the local area networks and uh, networking uh, of the MDAs is their own prerogative. Are you, are you getting it? So no matter how much you have brought to the table, to the, table, to the doorstep, mm. if the internal kind of uh, local area networking is poor, it's just like maybe you have uh, uh, pipes in your own house and water bottle will bring water, but the pipes are all, uh, <laughs> they mm. will have holes all over. Yes. You, it will not translate to the maximum uh, utilization that you're supposed that to have. It's the same thing with also the electricity. So that is what is happening. So, and the customer will uh, only see, will only say there is service when he sees. Exactly, exactly. You get what I'm saying. So this is the issue. So now this government, what it did, because we have been complaining about this, uh, because first, uh, uh, the local area networks in most of these MDA, some of them are aged. Normally you're supposed to be changing them after every five years, some are more than 13 years. Wow. Okay, so some are aged. Some, even right from inception, they were done poorly. Hmm. Okay? So, under one and two and three kind of problems like this. So, so no matter what we have brought, definitely will not translate, translate into. into. So, we again approach the government. You see, this is some of the challenges we have. So, and uh, they approved an intervention to Galaxy. Okay. On some MDS, MDS. identified MDS, based on the submission from Galaxy. That, okay, we have approved this particular amount of money for you for this and just go and redo their, their land. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the government has also done that. It has never been done before. Okay. So what you're saying in essence is yeah. that we are ready. That is it. That is what I'm saying. We are, we are, we are doing all what needs to be done to make sure that uh, uh, Nigeria has keyed into, has keyed into uh, this particular the kind digital of economy yeah. the digital economy you see we don't have alternative hmm. it is just what i have to say we don't have alternative because the world has gone that you see not only the world has, you see nigeria we said nigeria is a third world country why why is it a third world country you will the, simple, the only answer is that we had some industrial revolutions before one two three and we weren't able to key into it. Hmm. So therefore, we remain where we are. So now we have the fourth industrial revolution, which is knowledge-based, and then ICT-driven, ICT, uh, yes, knowledge, uh, and then ICT-based. ICT based. So we okay? just must so key into it. So we don't have it. an alternative. We just have to key into it. Otherwise, maybe perhaps from the third country, maybe we may be six or seven country. Yes. <laughs> okay, you say third, uh, you say you say we are third, 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 third world. Third world country will start to become maybe Sixth six or seven world, world country. Mm. So it's an and opportunity for us, that. and we cannot afford to lose this that particular whatever. We are supposed to put in all things that need to be put in place to see that we've driven that. And uh, you see, I've mentioned about the NITI project that has come, yes. uh, and, and, and the state that is going to cover. So I will say to some extent, the government is doing all what needs to be done, mm. okay, so that uh, at least we will be there. What, uh, you know, you know, you know, it's not only also only about infrastructure. Also about the the the, 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 the the human resource itself, your capability to use the, the, the internet, the, the your capability to use it for value. Unfortunately, many of our own uh, youngsters now sometimes they know how to use it, but just to go into YouTube another, no, not trying to now somehow use it to even get it as a value. How that will propel the economy. Yeah, so but that I'm, is what we are doing. But I'm sure that there, we have a lo you know, loads of youths who are, who are also, know, yeah, using I, it to that effect yeah, as well. Yeah, I agree with that. To it's improve true. the economy. I agree with that. So that is what, uh, what, 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 what is happening. We felt the government is doing what it needs to do. Okay. We are also calling on the private sector to join hands to see that. And then the whole of uh, the citizenry 
to also key into it and then the, uh, obtain the maximum value out of it. Mm. I think if we can be able to do this, if we can be able to do this, uh, we'll be able to accept. Okay, well, um, so far, yeah. I've been looking at you now. I mean, Professor Abubakar, you mm. came from the academia yeah. and boom, you are in the public mm. space. Yeah. I'm sure that there are two different worlds entirely. How have you been able to fit in seamlessly mm. to operations in the public sector? <laughs> well, wow. I think this is a $1,000 question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that from you. <laughs> it is I a can one, see it, that. It is, it is a $1,000 uh, one, 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 $1, question. Uh, truly, truly, the activities in the four walls of the academia is different from what you now have in the private sector. Uh, in, the, in the public in the sector. In the public sector. When you come out. They are truly, completely different. I will give you one example. It's a fundamental example. For example, in the public sector, if you are my boss, loyalty is first. Hmm. I'm always trying to follow whatever. Whatever you told me, that is what I'm going to do. Either right or wrong. Either right or wrong. That is just what I'm going to do. Maybe perhaps uh, you can simulate it with what the military says, is obey the last order. Yes. You get what I'm saying? So it's just like that. But in the academics, it's not like that. Hmm. I can meet the vice chancellor and just decide not to say anything to him and just turn my head like this. I'm fast. Wow. You, 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 you get what I'm mm -hmm. saying. So this is a very, very tremendous difference that you have between the public sector and also the, 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 the university. Okay. So, and for me, to some extent, uh, it is not like what you have said, the boom that you are talking mm. about. It was gradual. Okay. Tell us about uh, it. Yeah. So, and uh, before uh, coming over to Galaxy Backbone as uh, the managing director, I was also an executive director of the National Center for Petroleum, for Research, Petroleum and Research and Development. Yes. So, the National Center for Petroleum Research and Development is actually a public sector uh, organization. Maybe a public sector organization like a private sector. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. That is yes. why I said it's a transition. So, and it's under the Energy Commission of Nigeria. Okay. But uh, as I said, an executive director. So we have our own budget. We have everything that we are operating. Uh, so, so it's not a new thing for me. Mm. I know, I know all these kind of things. Uh, but uh, we, we, we are concentrating. You know, we, we, the National Center of Petroleum concentrates on, on the coming over with researches to do with petroleum. Yes. So it's like you are still doing an academic Academic job. work. Yeah, but I have to tell you that uh, as an executive director, uh, in a month, it's possible that maybe perhaps three weeks out of the four in the month, okay, uh, then uh, used to find myself here in Abuja to sort okay. out things. Okay, so almost every week, that means almost every week I'm maybe on my road to, on my way to do this mm. and that. So that is it. But I think this also, when you brought up this, uh, so I think that is what made it, there was a kind of, uh, there is a, more or less like a transition mm, that makes it you. possible. But I have to say that it is not possible. It's not, it's not, it's not easy. Okay, uh, the dynamics, as you find them here, in the galaxy to some extent they are still different okay. from what you have even in the national center for petrol research and development that center uh, was established and also resided in the same university mm. i was teaching mm. Mm. you you you, you, you yes. get us because all the centers of uh, the research centers of the energy commission of nigeria uh six of them yes. actually each of the geopolitical zones, zones. each of them is residing in a university. Mm. So you are still in your comfort. <laughs> yeah, you are still in your comfort zone. <laughs> you see what if I mean? If you say so, yes. You but I know that uh, there was that transition. What I know, maybe perhaps an ordinary academician, when I was now in the trans, uh, in, in the, the executive director of NCPR, an ordinary uh, academician may not know. Mm. Mm. So that is what I mean by it's a transition. But it's not really. Uh, 
uh, easy. And when I came in, sincerely, I had to do a lot of other things. And when I came in, my 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 birth was not looking like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, you did not have some grace. <laughs> you had all black. That, 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 when they just it. come in, at well, least even if you have some grace. grace, there are few. Maybe just a few strands. <laughs> yes, but now you have more grace that, than that, black. That is it. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, well, this. at this point in time in this conversation, yeah. I think it's time for us to take a break yeah. because yeah. obviously you have worked with different sets of people. I mean, it. you've worked with people in the academia. You've mm. worked in, with people in the in the public, public sector mm, now, yes. um, and I think it's important that we get to hear from one or two of them okay. so that they can tell us who really you are. He's a jolly good fellow. Uh, he's professional, I think, uh, because he comes from, um, you know, the ac academic, academic background. He is kind of focused and uh, attention to detail. Yeah, I see Professor Mohamed Abak, Managing Director, CEO of Galaxy Backbone, as one individual who is a goal getter, he tries to set for himself a target, also tries to define the direction he wants to go, and then uses all it takes within all favorable or using all the best of initiatives to ensure he achieves those targets. And I believe that if there's anybody who has a human face, when it comes to staff or employee motivation, I would say he's excellent. He's a man of personality. He's a man of charismatic, he's humble, he's upright, he's a man of integrity, he's a man of his words, and he's a man that can work 247. A leader that is very thorough, uh, is very versatile, and uh, to some level is simple and uh, is very fair. Glad to know you're still here with us. The program is still Executive Discuss and we've met um, a few individuals that mm. Professor Mohammed Bello Abubakar has worked with. Um, now to continue this conversation because um, you're a man who has achieved such great feats. I mean, it's like it was just ordained and somehow it's been one success story mm -hmm. after another. You have been a busy person. Maybe at the time you were in the academia, um, Yes, busy, but perhaps not as demanding as it is now. Yes. Since you've been in Galaxy Backbone uh, as the MD, you've had you know, your hands very, very full. And I'm wondering, having been this busy, how much time do you get to have for the family? <laughs> this is actually a very, very expensive question. Okay, uh, but not as much as a thousand dollars. I would have even wanted the family to answer it instead of myself. They will because answer. They will, yeah, you but, can be um, sure of that. But what, what I know is that um, sometimes I will walk and then come back to home maybe 11, 12 in the night. Wow. So, uh, and I don't have uh, Saturdays or Sundays. Okay. You work right uh, through. So, 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 at least to put things in order, one has to do, just do that. Although, we are trying to also be as smart as possible, okay, so that we can be able to apportion, uh, portion, uh, uh, you know, the time or manage the time mm. well, so that at least you will be able to continue to uh, to, to hold the hall. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Okay. So. So to some extent, we, 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 we are trying okay, to do that. But I have to, as you have rightly said, be challenged so much. But uh, it will surprise you that sometimes uh, just um, to put things, make it possible for you now to be more efficient again the next day. Uh, sometimes I may take up one, two days up. Fantastic. Okay, and, to spend uh, with the I family. Refuse, yeah, exactly. I refuse mm. to to look at anything. Mm. And even here in Abuja, sometimes, despite the challenges, uh, most of my family members, we have a kind of um, a, a, a roll call okay. or something like that. 
the children as well as we say, okay, today I've gone out with this, 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 this. Mm. Uh, so tomorrow when we have the opportunity, I'm going out with this, this, this. Mm. So to the extent that they will come and say, last time it was this, this, this. So now, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so, so I've been doing also something like that, mm. at least to keep the whole. That particular <laughs> question that he tried to evade. Let's get to ask a few members of the family and they will tell us really um, how his job has impacted the family, how much time he's had available for the family. My father is a good person, a good man, a good leader. I've never seen a leader like him. He's one in a thousand. Uh, actually, he don't really relax too, that much. He, he always walks. Even the weekends, he will sit here in the living room, walk. He will, he will sit here to walk, to finish some duties. Professor Muhammad Bill Abakara is a compassionate person, and he is also hardworking. Yeah? Uh, he is also result and goal-oriented. I would describe him as somebody that's, that is uh, straightforward, uh, he is such a person that uh, believes in books. Since his childhood, you always see him reading books. Uh, and we even, we friends, we call him Sufi. Sufi is an Islamic word, but is uh, defined as somebody that is uh, godly. Somebody that is not after wealth. So that's how we describe him. We call him Sufi. Some even call him Professor Sufi now. He has a principle. One of the principles is he is trustworthy. And if somebody is not trustworthy, he is done with. He doesn't come near him. Professor M.B. Abubakar is somebody who is trustworthy. Whatever he says, take him with his words. He's very, very hardworking. Very, very hardworking to the extent that he doesn't close for work until he finishes what he's doing. And uh, he's highly reliable, very reliable. He's uh, a person who uh, sympathizes a lot, especially with the downtrodden those under him. I'm not being proud. I'm not being proud. Muhammad is one of the best people. He's one of the best people. I train him, I train him, he's my first trainee, he has his juniors. 19 of them now are either, either finished university or are in the university, nine from, from him. The number 19 in my, in my house now, they are all in the university, from number one. Yes, um, mm. we've met the members of the family of Professor Muhammad Bailo Abubakar and my lips are sealed. Mm -mm, nothing. Judge for yourselves from what they have said. Mm. Does he have time for the family? Maybe he could, you know, give the family some more time. Mm. Now, I told you that, you know, right after this conversation, we will be paying a visit to the data center. So I think it's, mm. um, let's just take a quick trip there, mm. see what um, the national data center is all about and mm. what is available for us in terms of internet connectivity. Come on this ride with us.
Yes, good to know you're still here with us. The program is Executive <laughs> Discuss and um, wow, yeah. the National Data Center. Mm -hmm. So really, Nigeria is ready to key into, you know, the digital economy of the world mm -hmm. and we're good to go. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, from what we have seen here. Mm -hmm. As we begin to round the round of this conversation, uh, Professor Abubakar, I'm wondering now because I know that, yes, it takes... So much of your time goes into ensuring that mm -hmm. you provide an enabling environment yeah. um, for internet connectivity mm -hmm. uh, in Nigeria. You've said also earlier that there are times, yes, because of your heavy schedule, you're mm -hmm. able to take off maybe a day or two. Take us through what your normal day is like. When does your day start? How does it pan out? Mm -hmm. And when does it end? I know it ends much late in the night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have answered it, so why should I? No, you don't take us through <laughs> your day. <laughs> uh, so I think um, uh, I normally work in the, day, uh, in, in the daytime. Uh, in most cases, what I mean by in the daytime is uh, I will start early in the morning, as it is, uh, mostly around 5 a.m. in most cases. So 5 a.m. And uh, you will get to the office. Well, I will be doing also one or two things, trying to put things as to what I need to achieve for that day from five uh, to somewhere around nine. Wow. Okay, so then uh, more or less, basically, uh, I have the to do's of that day. Mm. Okay, then uh, take my breakfast and then. I zoom out to the office, and uh, here now, based uh, depending on the schedules and also my to dos, I will make sure that uh, I have uh, I have uh, done all what I have schedule myself to do. Unless otherwise, if maybe one or two things have come in that made it not possible for me to achieve that, uh, and um, normally it takes me up to eight p.m. in the office. Yeah, in the office. Uh, but sometimes, depending on the, maybe what needs to be done and solved the next day, sometimes it can take me up to 12. <laughs> okay, midnight. <laughs> okay, okay. I said it earlier that, that your day doesn't end. <laughs> so, so I can do that. And, uh, but uh, definitely, when I get back home, uh, it's for the family. <laughs> okay. At midnight. <laughs> at midnight. Yeah, yeah, but I don't do anything. You know? <laughs> okay. At midnight. Yeah, so, but you said a normal day. Sometimes I don't do anything. I said it about that. I right? hear I said you. about that. Sometimes those, I can take one, two days. Those oh, times. And then those I'll times decide sure, to just close my ears. I'm sure and, those uh, times are so few and far between. <laughs> you and I know that. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, How so, do you relax? Uh, well, sometimes, again, again, that is very also important. Out of the one week that we have, sometimes two, three days, uh, mostly in the weekend, and maybe weekends, and then maybe Wednesday, mostly Saturday, Sunday, Wednesdays, uh, I normally go out for some jogging. Okay. Uh, so walk around. Uh, I can remember that uh, then there was a time when the the workout is about one hour anyway. Yes. So, uh, and sometimes I used to do about eight, nine kilometers. Wow. Pain. Okay. Just to keep fit. Yes, to keep fit and then, uh, and then get back. Wow. And then, then perhaps take my own whatever. And I have talked about the leisure times. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, say so sometimes we have even a roster. <laughs> okay. Yes, uh, with the kids yeah, well, especially. Yeah, the kids people. So we mm. go out and then do one or two things. Including the family, you will be very surprised that they know that I do take them sometimes. We just hide and then take them to some of these joints and other things. And then we Fantastic. go there and uh, enjoy ourselves for that time. And come All back. in a bit to make up for the time you're not <laughs> that, available. That, that, that is it. That's very good. <laughs> that is it. Now, finally, as we um, round up mm. this conversation, yeah. it's important that Nigerians are assured mm. and um, know that truly mm. the federal government, the government of the day, mm. has put in so much. I mean, we've seen the data center, yes. but it's important that Nigerians get an assurance that, yes, indeed, we are ready. 
we are prepared to key into the digital economy, mm -hmm. into the digital space of the world. Yeah. So I want you to look straight at the camera and talk to Nigerians. Assure us that indeed we are ready for the world. I will say my country people, the private sector, the public sector and everybody, the government is uh, doing all what it takes putting in the infrastructure that uh, a country like us deserve okay to deliver on the on the digital economy it has decided to be now the direction it is supposed to now uh, take the whole country to so uh, it has put in all, as I said, all the infrastructure and it is continuing okay, to see that uh, all the identified gaps are also filled up. And uh, my assessment of uh, what the government is doing presently in terms of infrastructure, in terms of building the capacity, I would say it's so wonderful and definitely will be there, God willing. God willing, we will be there. Yeah. Thank you so much, you. Professor Muhammad Belo Abubakar. Yeah. Thank you so much. The it's Managing pleasure, Director, Allah. Chief <laughs> Executive Officer of Galaxy yeah. Banku, and it's been a good time. Yeah, it has been a very nice one with you. Thank you. <laughs> Indeed, Nigeria is ready to take the world by storm. Mm. We have the capacity in terms of human resources. Yeah. We have the capacity in terms of natural resources. Mm. And now in terms of information technology, mm. we have the capacity. Mm. All we need to do, you and I, mm. the public sector, the private sector, individuals, mm. is just to key in to the drive by the federal government to ensure that we remain at the top echelon of the digital economy of the world. That's been the size of our conversation today on Executive Discuss. I do hope you've had a good time with us. Why don't you join us again same time next week? Remember, as I always tell you, you never can tell who the individual that I'll be bringing to you, that trailblazer, will be. To find out who that will be, join us again same time, same station next week. I remain Ololadi Adini Jadili. God bless Nigeria.